Hey guys, is your bike hard to start? It idles kind of funny, but still has decent top end. If you have those kind of symptoms, it can be very frustrating, but usually the cause of that is the reeds. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to inspect your reeds and replace them. Hey guys, it's Brian. I'm back in the garage again today. Today I want to talk to you about replacing and inspecting reeds on a two-stroke dirt bike. In this case, it's a 2007 Honda CR125. And if you have the same problems that I was talking about earlier, hard start, especially on a warm bike, or you have really sluggish low end but pretty decent top end, and maybe you also have something like poor idle where the idle kind of goes up and down or it tends to kind of rev up a little bit slowly. That is one of the weirdest things. You'll start chasing the carburetor or thinking it's jetting, but oftentimes it's the reeds. And reeds, like any other thing on a dirt bike, have a service life. And sometimes the reed cannot be broken, which is, will obviously throw a very serious performance change on your motorcycle, but reeds can just get worn out. They start to chip, they start to like lose their pliability, and they just don't seal against the reed block very well anymore. And they'll just kind of drive you a little insane. And then when you look at them, you think like they don't look that bad. They take a lot of frequency. Those things are moving at high speed all the time and they're made out of carbon fiber most of the time, and carbon is a very rigid material. So uh, if you have the symptoms that I was talking about earlier, it's a great idea to just go ahead and replace the reeds. It's not that difficult to do, they're not that expensive to replace, and it's definitely one of those things that just gives you a little peace of mind when you're chasing some of these weird symptoms that I was talking about earlier. Another thing I want to mention about today's video, which I've been doing more lately, is adding timestamps. So if you just need to move ahead, you don't need the help of like removing your seat and getting all the ancillary parts off before you actually service the reeds. If you already know how to do that, you can kind of skip ahead. Same kind of with the end. I've got timestamps for the reassembly of the motorcycle, and if you don't need those things, you can just skip over that as well. Uh, I tend to follow the factory service manual very closely, and that's why I like to include how to get the uh, everything accessed so that you can actually service the reeds and then how to reassemble the bike. That's the way they do it in the service manual and I always like to kind of keep my videos inside the parameters of the service manual. One thing I was gonna mention too is in this case, I took off the rear subframe and I left the rear shock in place. Frankly, I wish that I had like removed at least the top pivot bolt off of the shock so that you could access the reeds much easier. I tend to work in a way that keeps me from cussing and if something gets in my way, I tend to lose my, my patience a little bit and I get frustrated. So I try to do things in a way that like limits my frustration. I think I would have done a much better job had I removed the shocked uh, pivot that I was talking about earlier. It would have been much easier to access the reeds. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to mention that you may notice in this video that the cylinder has been removed and the reason for that was is that I was doing a top end job at the same time that I was replacing the reeds on this motorcycle. So just want to kind of let you know like why you may see the cylinder off. You do not have to have the cylinder off in order to replace the reeds, obviously. But in this case, you may see even some of the footage that the cylinder is gone. So with that behind us, let's just go ahead and start with this job. The first step is removing the seat. So I'm ready if you are. So let's get going. Remove the seat. On the CR125, these are 10 millimeters. Next, remove the screw that holds the air filter boot to the back of the carburetor. I remove the fuel line at the fuel tank, but if you haven't done that, you can remove the fuel line at the carburetor. Next, remove the rear subframe, which has three bolts holding it on. Remove the topmost rear subframe bolt with a little wiggle from the carb boot. Next, you can take the carb off. You do not have to take the throttle cable off of the carburetor. Just loosen that and pull the carburetor out of the way. Next, you can remove the six millimeter Allen head bolts that hold on the reed cage to the cylinder. There's six fasteners. Then you just pull out the manifold. And the reed cage usually comes out without too much drama. Sometimes the gaskets are a little sticky. Whenever you take reeds out or anything else, you always want to cover up any openings into the motor. And that's a nice clean 
shot towel in there. So one other thing I was gonna mention too is that at the time of this filming, I'd already filmed all of the footage for this video, but uh, someone had reached out to me by email asking me some questions about a read specific to a, a earlier model Honda CR125. In this model, it has a spacer before you actually get to the manifold. Uh, Hondas were known for having really bad low end power and there's a lot of uh, experimentation going on with the intake track and the length of the intake track to try to improve the low end power on a Honda. And in certain earlier models, they added a little spacer. So I didn't go over the spacer installation, but spacers need to be bracketed by gaskets. So if you haven't seen this before, you can actually see a microfiche from companies uh, on the internet where you can look at their microfiche and see the orientation of the gaskets and so on so that you uh, make sure you don't make a mistake when you're reassembling your reeds. But my particular application, the 2007 CR125, only has a gasket between the intake track on the cases and the reed block itself. Just one gasket there. That is followed up by the manifold, which does not have a gasket. So I just want to kind of clarify that, that the installation I'm doing is on a later model, two-stroke CR125 and that the, there are some variations to the assembly order of the intake track when you're putting all this stuff together after a reed service. So I just want to kind of mention that. Okay, so with the reed block out, it's time to do a little inspection. I just want to let you know that in this case, I'm replacing the reeds, but the most common area for problems with reeds are along the distal edge or the outermost edge of the pedals themselves. Oftentimes they'll chip or crack. As I mentioned earlier, they're made out of carbon fiber and carbon is a very rigid material. It tends to be sort of like glass. It doesn't have a lot of flexibility and then it just shatters. So reeds take a lot of punishment and they are often chipped uh, along the outer edge as I mentioned and sometimes they even have cracks or pieces missing. So just keep those things in mind when you're inspecting the reeds, which is what we're about to do now. So let's just get back to the video and I'll explain more. When inspecting reeds, look to see if any light comes through. There's actually a significant amount of light coming through that one pedal in the middle. More than I've ever seen, frankly. That's really amazing. The other side, I'm flip it over, nothing. So we've got a defective pedal here in the middle. This one here, not sealing correctly at all. Very interesting. I have never seen that happen, honestly. The next step is to remove these three Phillips head screws. And in my experience, these need to be a very good interface between the screwdriver tip and the face of the screw itself. If this has slop in it, if this connection is sloppy, the screw heads are easily stripped and the last thing you want to do is round out these screw heads so make sure that you have a screwdriver that fits very snugly into the face of the screw and then you just remove the uh, reed block supports after you've removed all six screws you can take off this reed valve support or reed valve stopper and then the reed themselves. And that is a reed valve removal. If you're going to reuse reeds, you should always check the edges for fraying or cracking. This is the most common area for them to have a problem. So reinstalling reeds is actually really simple and the only a few things you really need to keep in mind. One thing about reeds is sometimes they have a very, very slight arc to them when you look at them in the uh, end view. And if there is a slight amount of arcing, the arc part should face against the reed block. So I don't know if you can see that. It doesn't really have much. It's extremely subtle. The curved portion, the curve should be faced against the reed block. Reeds have a notch on the side that's used for aligning the stopper plate. The stopper plate also has a relieved edge here that matches up with the reed. On this particular motor, this is the orientation, this is the top, and the notch side goes on this edge here. The manual also specifies that the screws have some thread locker installed on them.
tighten all six screws very firmly. Obviously you don't want a screw going flying into your cylinder. So inspect your manifold real carefully for any kind of cracks which uh, might occur. Just look. These things are pretty durable but they can crack especially you know when people push them around installing the carburetors on them. Just look for any defects on this boot. This one looks real good. But just make sure that you don't uh, put on a cracked boot. That'll cause all kinds of weird problems where your motor will tend to rev up when it's idling and do all kinds of weird things. So just inspect that very carefully. Make sure no cracks. This one looks good. So we're ready to install it. All right, so we have inspected the reeds and in this case replaced the reeds and also inspected the manifold, the boot, just to make sure there's no cracks or any kind of tears. All of it's in good condition. So basically we're on to reassembly now. So let's get back to the video. So I always put a rag inside the intake here just to make sure nothing falls in while you're doing this work. So remove that. Next we take our reed block, our newly assembled reed block, and drop that in. Now we're ready for the manifold. Then install the six bolts that go around the manifold. Thank you, speed brake. All right, that was a fair amount of torture there. Reconnect the fuel line and the compression clip. Now we can install the carb into the manifold. With the carburetor and the manifold, you can tighten down the hose strap. Holds in the carb into the manifold. Rerun your vent lines. Now ready to reattach the subframe. And this strap goes around the uh, intake. Next install this rubber boot over the exhaust junction and I like to put RTV in there to keep it from spewing oil all over my nice swing arm. Reinstall the seat. All right, we're getting close to being done. Hey guys, read job behind us, not too bad. Not that difficult of a job, a short video, so you know it's not that hard. Uh, anyway, hey, hopefully you guys learned something today. I hope that I helped somebody out there to do the read job on their motorcycle. Not that difficult, as I mentioned. So you may consider watching my video on top end repair uh, at this time because when you replace your reeds it's not a bad idea if you haven't done so to go ahead and service the top end. The problems with the reeds tend to be exacerbated by problems with the, uh, the cylinder side so if both of those are not sort of in low hour specification or low hour condition you might continue to have problems so it's nice just to knock them all out. You got the whole back end of the bike off just do the whole thing now. So I'll leave a, a link somewhere and I'll also leave a link at the end of this video that you can watch. So, hey, thanks so much for watching my channel. Thank you for all of the kind comments, the thumbs up, everything. The subscriptions mean so much to me, so thank you so much for that. And I'll be back in the garage making more videos. In fact, I've got several that have been filmed. I just need to do the editing. So those are coming up real soon. So thanks once again and have fun in your garage.